Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dave Emmons Show. I'm glad everybody can be here today. And I thank all of you for following the show and, and uh, viewing our guest. We've had, we have some exciting guests, and I got one today that I've got so much on this guy. There's so much information on him. He's a physicist, and he's a scientist, and he's a researcher, uh, and he's done own, his, all of his own work, actually. And uh, we have another co-host that'll probably be with us, Tom Outhalls. I'm waiting for him to, uh, to jump in. And as soon as he does, I'll briefly introduce him and we'll, the three of us will talk. Tom Althaus is the one with the Matrix. He's written The uh, Immortals in which turned into the Matrix. And this is what my guest, Mike Emery, he talks actually about the Matrix, among many hundreds of other things. Let me introduce my guest for this day. This is Sunday, February 26th, 2023. And... Uh, uh, this is Mike Emery, a little bio here. He worked at the self-head Muchenfuk, and uh, just figure that one out. <laughs> and he studied physics at the Montana State University, uh, Bozeman. And he's, uh, he's, he's on Facebook. You can find him on Facebook. And, and uh, he's, he's figuring out the workings of the universe. And, and man, has he. Uh, he's done both sides of the fence, uh, religion, meditation, and on one hand, and from, from very frontiers of physics, on the other hand, on his way to enlightenment. Now, he's, uh, he's consciousness. He's into that. And we're going to be talking about that also. Uh, but he's into the enlightenment part. Uh, he, he's leaving a trail of written essays and research papers. And there are many of those. And we'll, we'll get into those just in a second. And it's uh, where he orders his own thoughts as much as communicating them to friends and colleagues. He actually teaches uh, scientists. He doesn't teach students. He's not a professor per se, but he teaches uh, scientists about what he writes and what he, what he has figured out. And, and he's, I talked to him the other night, he blew my mind about most of the things that we talked about. Uh, the purpose of the, uh, his article uh, is he talks about space and where uh, essays and, and they're collected and made available to everybody that wants to read them. He's on academia.edu. I'm on that, uh, I'm on that site also. And, uh, he's got many papers published on there. Uh, Mike is no ivory tower man. He, he was a cowboy in Montana when he started off. He's from the USA, but he lives in the UK now. And that's, that's where he makes home. And, uh, he, uh, he played football and he was uh, apparently quite well or quite good at uh, football. He was into commercial fishing. Uh, he had, and uh, he he was into oil exploration, and he's done some business uh, uh, enterprises in Alaska in oil. Uh, his his subsequent uh, search led him to free energy healing, meditation, anti aging, and complementary medicine to the edges of physics and back. And, and my goodness, uh, I can spend a long time talking about this man, but actually he, uh, he's, he's been, I guess you can say he's had the mind of a lot of different people that has been uploaded to him, downloaded to him. Uh, we're talking about general Patton, uh, and, uh, and other people he'll talk about some of those that he, as we go along, uh, this academia.edu he's had, a, a publication types 13,431. And I've seen his publications on, uh, uh, you know, academia.edu and they're really great. He gets into levitation, telepathy, uh, tel 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 telepathy, telepathy, trans music. Okay. Telepathy, not telepathy, but, um, he's also into teleportation and he'll get into a lot more, but, uh, it's, it's just too wide to really be talking about or, or putting a long intro in it because that'll take a half an hour. But Mike Emery, buddy from e UK, do uh, you have anything to, I guess, add to that? This is, I kind of jumped around in your bio just to try to cover a lot of, a lot of space in, in a short time. Uh, what do you got to say to people? I lived in a monastery too. In that particular monastery, I studied enlightenment. So I'm crystal clear on enlightenment. <laughs> you, you can ask, ask me about that later. You, no. uh, <laughs> it's All not right. what we think it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? What? That, Never is. Yeah. What brought you into this? I know I I read something about that you got into uh, the miracles and manifestations, and and that type of thing and consciousness. 
what actually got you changed around and going into doing all these research papers and all this scientific work, Michael? Just reading books, uh, you know, and tons of books, you know, like virtually all the Seth books, all uh, uh, Carlos Castaneda books, uh, a number of the Edgar Casey books. What else? You know, uh, the Montauk Projects books, all four of them. Uh, the Secret Life of Plants by Christopher Bird and Peter Tompkins. Got to be a Bible. Excellent book. Uh, you know, it goes on like that. I read a shitload of books. And after a while, I, I got to where I don't need to read books because I won't say that I know it all, but I really do know exactly how it works. The mystery of that is zero because there's only one rule uh, that applies to everything. You know, the matter doesn't exist. It's all consciousness. And, and consciousness obeys one rule, that's God's law, which is I am that I am since like attracts like since mirroring. It's a holographic universe that just all mirrors off. Any one speck, one speck, just a speck in that hall of mirrors, and you got a whole multiverse, you know? And, uh, um, you know, on and on like that. It, it's basically what I got, I am into is consciousness physics. And, it's provable that the very apparent that I am the most advanced spiritual physicist that's ever been. And there's, and that's a big thing, you know, to say that's ever been, but it's true. It's like ridiculous. And it's verifiable because the technology that I've got that we've developed does teleportation. It does telepathy it does levitation okay well teleportation and telepathy are freedom for the human body mm -hmm. you know that breaks us out of the matrix you know and and it gives us free freedom to travel in the ethers anywhere we want there is no there and so the, the neat thing about teleportation is it's instant now, mike you could know? you explain to the people what the, the ether is and and what and what it's made up of Oh, the ethers, yeah, the, 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 the huge deal. You know, science, physics have been leading us astray forever. And, and the, the, the way that they do that is by not recognizing the ethers, because Einstein said they didn't exist. As a result of the Michelson-Morley experiment, uh, which was done in 19, 1897 or 87, way back then, and they didn't they were looking for ether drift and they weren't able to do it and so about the same time that that uh uh einstein was saying that the ethers didn't exist there was a guy named dayton miller that was replicating the michelson morley experiment which is an excellent experiment and it's been replicated innumerable innumerable times both by dayton miller and by others and it's the ether. All of them have proved that the ether drift. Okay, so Einstein wrote to somebody. I've I've got it somewhere that if Dayton Miller's experiment proves ether drift, then it cancels relativity. You know, he knew that. You know, and Dayton's Miller Dayton Miller's experiment worked and proved ether drift. Then he just forgot it. Well, probably the cabal got him to forget about it. Forget about it because they don't want us to know about the ethers. Once we start knowing about and working with the ethers instead of against them, uh, we get into freedom. Then, then you can get into telepathy and teleportation, levitation, all that stuff is, is very simple when you realize that you're just a piece of space within space. And so you can go anywhere you want. Right. Yeah. I, that the, uh... Now the ETs have that technology. They can go into the ether space, and because they demonstrate that uh, uh, telepathy and and uh, also you know teleportation, I just want to remind the people out there that's listening to you now that that you are in the top one percent of most listened to. One tenth, one tenth of one. One tenth of one percent. One tenth. Seventy six million. Re yeah, seventy six million researchers. Right. Twelve thousand institutions. Yeah, top one to one percent have been that way for years. Yeah, uh, and I read that and I thought, oh my goodness! And, I, and then I saw it, I saw it on academia.edu, 
and it's something like 176,000 people are on academia.edu. And those are scientists and, and different, you know, types of, of specialists. Oh, 76 million. There's 76 million. 70, you know, 76 million all around. Okay. All around the country or world. Okay. All right. I, I was just talking, uh, I guess about the U S but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I saw that and it's, it, it's amazing that, you know, how much you know about this stuff. And I was amazed that when we had our long chat the other night that I, I'll just come, I just come away from it thinking, wow, I got a lot to digest. Uh, Mike, could you just yeah, tell, yeah, like, <laughs> you just tell us a little bit what, what you were telling me? Uh, now I was just saying I'm into the ET thing. Or I've written a couple of well, a couple of books. So they what do they want? And also uh, a war book, Senseless Wars, and then the Angel Book and the Supernatural Entities. I'm I'm all into this. And what you're talking about is the scientific side of the things that I've been seeing. And you're saying that we manifest these things and that life is just a movie. Is that right, Mike? Everything outside your eyeballs is a reflection of the movie going on behind it. The, multi the multiverse, the entire multiverse is, we make it every microsecond. Mm -hmm. Everything everything starts as a seed in darkness every microsecond. And then it there's an electromagnetic sequence of events that occurs after that that I've got written down, you know, and it, it, it's without mystery because there's just one rule, like attracts like in mirroring and when, when it's just so simple, it's ridiculous. If, if scientists would actually toggle, you know, admit that the ethers are there, then they're going to have to come in contact with my information or at least go down the same road, you know, because they, and they'll wind up at the same place as has the Monroe Institute, which is another part of being the most advanced spiritual physicist ever. The Monroe Institute has made the deepest dive into consciousness of anybody, of any group, anywhere, you know, because they do it via astral projection. And they can go to the past, and they can go to the future, and they can go everywhere in this universe, any, anywhere in the multiverse, they can go. They have done, okay? But they don't know about the ethers. <laughs> you know, is this the dark matter. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Is, huh? is it what, the what, dark what, matter what, in space ethers? Excuse me? Is it the dark matter energy in space that's made up of the ethers? The ethers originally were made from love, and they're just lines. And it started out very simple. I am herself in space. Inside a Planck length, this space is, you know, the Planck length is infinitesimally small. It's, you know, one to the minus, I don't know, 33 or something, maybe, you know, when nobody knows. Okay. But anyway, it's a real small space. And that's where herself started. And she was lonely. You know, so the first thing that happened was loneliness and then fear of loneliness. And so all of our karma belongs to her because she she's foisted this shit onto us okay right uh, and so she's there for a long time and wanting to identify herself so she went i am that created a little a little half circle a little half moon you know let me see yeah a little half moon like that okay and so i am when she originally asked it was a question you know and so since there was nobody else there there was only one answer. I am that I am, which created two little half circles. And those two little half circles, she loved them very much because it beat what had been going on, you know? And and so she was there going, I am that I am a lot. And that created the ethers. The two little half circles are made out of love and love is self-attractive. So they pull together in circles, okay? And then... The, literally the lines of the ether are piezoelectric green, which you can see. You know, I mean, science, they it's not like a mystery at all. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, piezoelectric green is that's it's that's the color of the heart chakra. It's the color of love. Right. And so the in then the ethers are literally the lines of the circles attracted one another and they pulled into squares. Okay. Yeah, you know, and and then it goes on from there. It goes into rectangles, into pentagonal ethers, which are really interesting. 
as a boundary layer between the four-sided ethers and the hexagonal ethers. And then you go up to the seven side ethers, which are also a boundary layer and chaotic. And those boundary layers, like in the original darkness, are chaotic. It's chaotic. Boundary layer, chaotic. All of the even or odd-sided ethers are chaotic. You got seven and eight. Uh, the planet and solar systems live live in the uh, eight-sided ethers. And then it goes on up to 12 that I know of. Of and maybe beyond that, I, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, I, I see evidence for 22, but I can't see anything in between there. So that doesn't make sense. So I'm resting on 12 for now. now yeah. Can you tell and, people how you get this information besides reading and studying and, and uh, I guess, bringing in your own thoughts and, and putting pe the pieces of the puzzle together? You get some downloads uh, like, uh, you, you know, like from famous people in the past. Uh, you mentioned it yeah, all the time, uh, uh, it's, yeah, but it comes when I'm studying something, you know, because my brain switched off and I'm absorbing information. And as I absorb information, I, I, oh, anymore, I, I got to where I don't like to read very much because uh, I'm always at the end of it, you know, or during it going, that's not quite right. Let me <laughs> let me explain this a little bit better, you know, and so. Every time I get involved in reading something, then I get these little voices, either myself or from from inside of me. Actually, it's not outside. Nothing comes from outside of you. You know, it's all comes from inside of you. You know, and and so I, I get these voices, and the voices we all get are, are from our our own personal lineage. You know, you know things reincarnational cells. You know, you know that's our, that's the very first. Uh, set of entities that want to talk to us, and so I, you know, my entities are like Thor, Simon Peter. My my uh, uh, horoscope shows that I'm Simon Peter, and and he was a fisherman. I was a fisherman this life. Mm -hmm. You know, all everything is a mirror. You know, and I've got all of these mirrors. Okay, so Simon Peter, Thor, grade school, high school, college. I looked after all the bullies. There weren't any bullies around me. You know, they went to the hospital instantly. You know, and then, and then uh, uh, Prometheus, uh, that blew me away. And somebody uh, on academia, you know, said, "Well, you must be like Prometheus. You want to give away all these technologies." And so then, I have all the advanced technologies. The, you know, the uh, replicators. I know how to make them, and I've got one design that'll be a little bit bigger than what they've got. And hopefully it works. I don't know that it work, but it'll it will do something. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, physical age regression. They've got uh, med beds. I've got what I call a dream machine, which is a step further than the med beds, much further. Like like the Monroe Institute and the deepest dive that those guys made. Right. I'm ahead of them because they, they, they don't know about the ethers. Same with Edgar Casey. I'm ahead of him because he doesn't know about the ethers or how they work. Yeah, you know? and uh, uh, so. The dream machine imposes a etheric field, an ambient naturally occurring etheric field on the body, thus entrains the body to that etheric field. Once you come in harmony with one etheric field, you're in harmony with them all. You know? And you can mirror off wherever you want. You know? And be careful what you think. <laughs> yeah. And so that, that's the dream machine. The dream, and then also you can do shape shifting. You can do whatever, you know, it, it's a, it's a nonpolar field, you know, completely blank field, which is what it all starts with. That's what the, the, the nature of the ethers are. They have a structure, you know, you know, squares and all that and circles, squares and triangles. They have a, a, a structure, but it's still blank. There's nothing there until Anu comes along. Anu, the first name of God in the Babylonian text and Sumerian text and Vedas, which populates every other E, uh, etheric cell and the the Anu uh, it contains the two male forms of God as the Hindu have known for a few thousand years they call it the Shiva Lingam which has Vishnu and Shiva in it, Vishnu being the preserver form, right handed spin and centripetal uh, and that's the DNA uh, central spin of the Anu and then the spin goes the opposite way around the outside, that's a Shiva spin and it's centrifugal, as Victor Schauberger taught us. When you 
spin things in a centrifugal manner that is death. It's life destroying. Or if you spin things in a centripetal manner, like the DNA part of the Anu, it's life affirming and life holding together. But the big, big thing about Shiva is that it also, it's basically like a pixel, the Anu dissolves the information so we can have new stuff. Okay. And that's, that's like the father energy, you know, in a family. He's a guy that wants to be having fun with everybody, you know, and that's what Shiva is all about, you know, is having fun and letting go, you yeah. know, and, and so the lingam, the Shiva lingam, the most sacred shape in Hinduism is worshipped as being the shape through which energy passes as it goes from formlessness to form and vice versa, from form back to formlessness. And so you basically have the Anu, you know, which is the information that passes into the Anu comes from darkness. Everything comes from darkness. Everything starts in darkness every microsecond by going, I am that I am. And then that's a seed that's an image. That image travels up through the ethers progressively, which expand in size according to the Fibonacci series. And, uh, and they grow. The images grow because their etheric realms grow, right? And they're coming up through the, the four-sided ethers till I hit the uh, uh, pentagonal ether, which is an amplification system. Uh, and it's also where differentiation starts. And then it gets broadcast into the hexagonal ethers uh, where it's made manifest. Now, all of this, what I'm describing, happens in no time. You know, it's instant. You know, I mean, really instant. There's a blink rate to everything, you mm -hmm. know, and and that's the replicator that I've got designed. It's called a blink rate machine. Yeah, Mike, you so mentioned once you get earlier, uh, the the female aspect of it is that the divine uh, feminine uh, figure that uh, you you said. Yeah, right. But the space, you know, that, that I refer to her as the old bitch because <laughs> she's the one that that imposed fear and, and suffering, and, and suffering comes from darkness. It's a field of love. We have where we were. The field of love is changing to a field of euphoria. And you can see it happening. You know, it's euphoria is color. The color of euphoria is like purple. And all the purple sunsets and and uh, and then even the ethers are going to light purple. But so we have a field of love all along. You know, and because of the piezoelectric green nature of it and herself loving it. But herself stayed there in darkness. She didn't. She hasn't done anything. Okay, and neither the two male forms of God. They haven't done anything, or they haven't done much. You know, because they are the background screen. They are the, the the basis of the matrix. The background screen. All of these ethers are like a mathematical matrix. You change like all matrices. You change one box in the matrix, and it changes the entire matrix. Mm -hmm. They haven't done that. <laughs> if they had, we'd know. Right. <laughs> uh, what about you know? We talk yeah. about this matrix, and uh, we also you just said Anu. Uh, is there any relationship to Anunnaki? Uh, yes and no. The 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 Anu is a shape, like the lingam. It's it's and it's it's the two male forms of God. Period. Now. The Anunnaki have their sky god, who's named Anu. Mm -hmm. well, excuse me, where did he get his name? And the answer is he conscripted it, you know, from, uh, you know, from that particular shape. I don't know if you call it a sacred shape, but it's an aboriginal shape. Now, other than the ethers, the the Anu is the aboriginal shape. The way the Anu came into being, herself making ethers do the rule. I am that I am, like attracts like. And she'd been doing that for a long time. And she all of a sudden went, geez, I've been doing this for a long time. And at that time, tried to go out in a straight line, which didn't work, of course, because of the rule. Uh, I, and so it had to circle back on itself. And so within it, the etheric cell where the, this first time component started, it spun on it. And you can actually see that. When you look at the proper pictures of the animal, you can see the little, the little uh, circular pigtail at the bottom of it. And then it goes up to the middle. One spin, you know, one, uh, it has not a helix yet until it comes back down. And it goes up to the top in this etheric cell, runs into the wall of the ether and has the head back because of the rule, you know, like attracts like, you know, I am that I am. 
And so as it's heading back, the spin continues in the middle, which portends a spin on the outside, which is the Shiva part. And, and then it comes back down the middle and goes back up. And then you got the double helix. You know, and then it comes back down on the outside and you can actually see it. You know, the, the Hindu have known about the Anu for a long time and the Rishis have gone in and uh, actually seen it and, and drew, made drawings of it. And, and nowadays, you know, with Korean photography, I have videos of it. <laughs> now, now, do you think that a lot of these like Hindus and Buddhists and all these other religions were taught by somebody out there or an advanced society, uh, Mike? Well, they, we taught each other, and the and there's nobody out there. You know, there's only inside of us. Okay, there's nobody, not one son of a bitch anywhere outside of us. No, nothing doesn't exist. Okay, it's all inside of us. You know, like I say, you know, anything you see is a reflection of the movie that's going on inside of you. Uh, and it's all made of consciousness and is malleable, right? But we collectively, humans, every one of us, inside of our subconscious, they know. Look it up. Our subconscious processes data equivalent to 10,000 feature lake movies all playing at the same time. Therein lies the images for the entire multiverse. We make it every microsecond. And uh, and and there's there's a collective part to it, obviously, you know, because there's a you know the Maharishi effect and the hundredth monkey effect, which I boiled down, down to what I call a hundred idiot effect. Because, excuse me, idiots, see how you're making all this? Why did you make a shit show? That was the point I wanted to get to earlier about the ethers. Yeah, the shit. The ethers, the whole etheric realm, is made out of love. The anu is made out of one part time and the other part love. So the whole etheric background screen. It's made out of two parts love and one part time. Excuse me, where did suffering come from? And who invented it and why? You know, I mean, if you want to be a real spiritualist like Merlin is, Merlin ascribes the same power to the white side as the dark side. And so I did a deep dive on suffering. You know where I wound up? In the same place everything comes from. Darkness. It's the only place it could have been manifest. Okay, well, excuse me, why? <laughs> it's got to be a good reason. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the answer is, all-knowing is boring, and suffering is a complete disconnect from all-knowing. You know? And so we, as pure consciousness, there's a level to ourselves. That, that I mentioned to you earlier, you know, about our pure consciousness or our observer self, which anybody would... We all can get in touch with our observer self by just noticing that you're thinking or emoting, either one. Okay, excuse me, who noticed? The answer is the part of you that doesn't think nor emote, okay? That's your pure consciousness <laughs> that doesn't feel much, okay? And has no memory, everything passes through because in darkness, there's no structure. You know? And so there ain't anything to plaster a memory on. You know? and the, all of the memories and all the shit show was plastered on the ethers and herself and her making of the ethers and himself, the Anus, supported that. Okay? As is obvious. <laughs> so Mike, we, can't can describe us, whole, we can't describe a whole lot of divine intelligence to them dwellers. Right. Mike, can you tell us where was the beginning of time or thought or consciousness? Where was the yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the beginning of consciousness? It's just like I described, I am that I am, and Edgar Casey called it also, you know, and uh, uh, he did it before me, and I didn't know that he'd done it. And and, and then when I, I finally stumbled across his, his um, the channeling that he did about the beginning of consciousness starts in darkness, uh, and everything starts in darkness, time, everything, all ideas, everything, creativity. Everything comes from darkness. And a way to get there is, or, is orgasm. But we've been cut off from that. It was in the Bible. It was to be taught to us in the Bible. And they they cut us off from that. Uh, you know, uh, at the Council of Nicaea. And, 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 and so now the dark side uses sex magic. And they learned it from Aleister Crowley. That's who I learned it from. 
But then come to find out it was in the Bible. Uh, Greg Braden found that out. And I've got an essay that lays it all out. And at the 325 AD, Council, uh, Council of Nicaea mm -hmm. and Constantinople is uh, where a lot of stuff was edited out of the Bible. Bible. Mm -hmm. And the same year was the same year that our good buddy, St. Augustine, in, uh, you know, come up with the original sin, which is found under carnal knowledge. <laughs> uh, can you so we let this go against orgasm because uh, it works. Yeah, so a lot, of, yeah, a lot of, uses it against us. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us are thinking that history is not what we think it is, and you you are a good example of the knowledge behind that. Who were these elites and these people who kept all these secrets away from us and and made us live like we are now today, Mike? They're they're uh, they're our constructs. The whole cabal. The whole satanic crew is our construct. We did it for the purpose of maintaining separation from all knowing, because all knowing is very difficult to get away from, as evidenced by the massive extent of the loche that's been produced on this planet and all other planets in the solar system. But almost all of them been inhabited, even Mercury. Okay, and uh, and the loche loche production is the separation energy that we use to be cut ourselves and suffering to cut us ourselves off from all knowing uh, and so since we manifest the entire multiverse then we needed the archon we got herself to make the archon for us when this multiverse started and the way that happened was the first anu forms up in the ethers and, and when when that anu formed up okay it's her offspring. Normally, a mother nurtures it and does all that, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. This multiverse, she knew to go, what is it? You know, to ask the question, what is it? Which is mana in Hebrew means what is it? You know, it's a big deal, that question. You know, and so there's a lot of other iterations of it. And so when she went to her offspring and what what is it that opened pandora's box of judgment and so it made the archon which if people want to talk about there being evil whatever in this solar system it all starts with the archon okay and the the archon are have anus but their their anus made out of one part time and the other part judgment to what is it okay and so the uh, and so they they can't grow because they because the uh, judgment. But what they can do is they can get together and make uh, images together, like the jinn or images like Satan. Right. They make it. The archon make it. The, the reason they make it is because we have added uh, gains of function to the archon so that they work better. So that they so that we can make more loche and have more separation and and they eat our loche for us, our fear, and that's everybody knows. I mean, if you study the archon at all, that's the the uh, um the Gnostics you know had it pretty well nailed, but not quite. They don't know exactly what the where the archon come from because they don't know about the ethers, you know. And so they are the archon are these little tiny supernatural bugs that can see the future and are multi-dimensional because and needed to be because they need to eat our shit before it mirrors off and amplifies all of these these gaps you know in in the ethers analog amplifier you know uh, th th if you understand that mm -hmm. you know if analog amplifier is a capacitor with a grid in between and the information goes into the grid and the gap and then and then as it mirrors off it amplifies. It actually performs a cal calculus function of integration that solves for the area underneath the curve. And so the, the, the amplification is where you got x equal integral 2 sine y. Then the 2 has got to come out from behind the integral and get squared. So it's four times as much. You know, and, and, uh, and so every time something mirrors off, it gains power and function, gains power. You know? And so if the loge mirrors off, through the multiverse, it collapses the multiverse, which we've collapsed a whole bunch of multiverses getting to this one, you know? And, and <laughs> this, this one, <laughs> this 
multiverse is our favorite because it has the best shit show that we've ever designed, which has not collapsed the multiverse yet. It's not going to. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've been able to replay it and replay it and replay it. You know, and it's so long, it's four and a half million years long that we forget. And it's got all of this suffering and all this wars and stuff like that, and all this separation that goes on all the time. So you got the entire multiverse that's made by our subcon by us, okay? Which includes this shit show that we've designed, which is put together scene by scene, just like any other movie, okay? Yeah, and some of those scenes didn't work out too well because it collapsed the multiverse, so it had to start over again. No? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's a lot of the scientists, your your buddies, uh, they're actually saying that the, we're holographic and we're, we're also in a matrix and we're computer operated by some supreme being. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, the supreme being is us. It, it's like the, the supreme beings, you know, are herself and himself, you know, herself being space and everything within space. The, the, the Hindus call it Brahma. And then Vishnu and Shiva or uh, Vishnu is Jesus and Shiva is God the Father. And those two himself, they make up the background screen. Okay. Everything that's manifest within the background screen that we look at as being our reality springs from our subconscious. We're the creators. We're the ones that are creating it. They are two mother and father. They just let us do whatever we want to do, you know, because it's entertaining to them too. <laughs> So we're recycled uh, back and forth and we have all this inside of us and you, and we call it gut feelings, but you're saying that this is from prior uh, past lives. Uh, And then let's get into reincarnation, uh, Mike. Uh, My guest is, uh, is Mike Emery. He's a physicist and uh, very knowledgeable about all these things that you're listening to. And he's for real. Uh, I've looked him up. I've vetted him, and uh, you know he's he is for real because it's uh, he, we we talked, and I know that uh, he knows a lot of stuff. But what about this reincarnation? I know a lot of people wonder about that, and uh, religious people also wonder about it, and they don't think it's true. But Mike, what do you think about that? Well, it's, it's idiot, idiots can't die. You know, all humans are idiots. We're puppets of the movie. You know, and and so you can't die. And the reason you can't die is you don't get to get away. <laughs> well, it's not that bad. We choose to stay here. <laughs> but, you know, because it's entertaining. We're entertaining one another. And even though we're replaying the exact same shit show over and again, over and over, I mean, the, the, the number of times that the shit show is replayed is ridiculous. Okay. So if... You have the entirety of history, the entire solar system, the entire multiverse, all replaying every microsecond. Then what about the idiots that are involved? <laughs> they replay too. <laughs> so what perpetuates... <laughs> I've never explained it that way, but it's no. true. No. But what perpetuates this, this shit show, as you call it, is it, it's the elites, and you mentioned the, the Vatican. And, and Oh, the elites. The elite. <laughs> now, love. If, 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 you know, if any of these fluffheads, you know, these metaphysical fluffheads, I call them, would spend more than two brain cells and more than two seconds thinking about what's the end result of love and collecting all the love you could ever imagine, where do you wind up? And the answer is in a big, massive, loving multiverse. The first multiverse is made out of love entirely, wherein there is continuous orgasm and uh, crescendos. It is the ultimate purgatory, because it's very hard to get away from, and there's no creativity going on there, so that's why we don't like it. You know, boring and really boring. Boredom is the reason for the shit show. Yeah. You know, all knowing the minute, the minute, the minute we escape, escape from, you know, as pure consciousness is, the minute we escape from the, the continuous orgasm, the next 
split second, we're into all knowing, you know, and, uh, and, you know, cause you get out of it. And so all of us here have escaped from that multiverse. Mm -hmm. And so I have a kind of a theory, which is not much of a theory. Um, it's kind of well the first part first part of it's fact you know humans have been becoming smaller dumber and weaker over billions of years you know the the, the number of repeats on this planet a minimum of 23 uh, genetic evidence for 23 different species of humans that have populated this planet and uh, uh, you notice the light changing mm-hmm do you notice the light changing? It goes blink, blink. You know, it, you know that that happens a lot because all the energy around me. Anyway, so we all escape from the continuous orgasm multiverse, and we eventually built up this shit show. You know, and on on this shit show on on this planet, seven and a half billion or whatever number of people, we all know one another because we all come from. From plank length, and we're all bosom buddies. We're, we come from the little tiniest. We're all so intimately aware of each other. It's ridiculous, right? We all know one another, right? And that's everybody here. We also have friends that are stuck in that continuous orgasm, and so us humans have been becoming smaller, dumber, weaker, and more numerous, so that we can have more human vessels for escapees from continuous orgasm and the newest ones the latest ones are the ones we put in as the elite you know as the 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 the, uh, uh, the souls of the elite we assign to the the uh, satan worshipers and blood drinkers we assign the newest guys to them okay because you know and so they live in fear you know and why do they live in fear it's the first it's God herself. You know, she's fearful. It's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Period. <laughs> <laughs> and so seeing how they just got out of the loving thing, then they go immediately to fear because that's what's there. You got fear and love. That's a duality. That's the root of duality is fear and love, which euphoria, double tech, expunges, eliminates. All right. So our satanic folks are here to we give them the job of creating lotion <laughs> and enslaving us and creating angst and everything that the governments do which is you know which we are now exposing for our, ourselves we are getting to see our own shit you know by what we've created with these governments trying to kill us you know so they're not trying they're getting the job done <laughs> But they're not doing a mass extinction event. And the reason for that is that the Matrix movie that heretofore uh, has always resulted in a mass extinction event. I mean, always, not just 23 times on this planet. Mars, very definitely, was it completely, they shut it off the atmosphere. The atomic uh, war that they had was so phenomenal. Tiamat, they, we, we blew that whole planet up. Mercury was populated a long time ago when the, when the sun was smaller. And we found foundations or fortifications on Mercury. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and it's all due to the spoken word. Uh, the, 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 the spoken word is a, what I call a dastardly design feature that keeps us in duality and locks us into lineal time. You know, and... Uh, uh, the spoken word requires lineal time. And so the elite come and they teach us languages. They teach us all this stuff, all of which is BS that keeps us locked in the shit show, doesn't it? You know, us, us this is our human body. The human body has infinite awareness and it is, can be separate from the matrix movie. And that's, that's our goal is to actually become separate and and not have all knowing at the same time you know so that, that's where we're headed the, the, a euphoric dream time is on the cards and we're going into it very obviously 
Right. You're, you told me the other night that uh, all the evil is here on this planet Earth. And anything that comes through the Ethernet becomes love and pure uh, at heart, I guess, positive. All right. But yeah, yeah there, 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 are no, there are no evil aliens that got here from anywhere outside of the solar system. Because obviously, you know, you don't travel at the speed of light. You, you they, it's kind of a well, like the Pleiades people say, it takes them eight minutes to get here. The four hundred million, the four hundred, what is it, four hundred light years away, mm-hmm. and they come in eight minutes. Well, it's not true. They come in instantly. But so they have to ha- have some form of teleportation to the ethers, which are made out of love. And the more you travel in the ethers, the more love you're going to pick up. It's a rule. Like attracts like. You can't get away from it. So there are no evil extraterrestrials that have got here from somewhere else in, you know, in the, in this universe, you know, but, the, all the evil exists in the minds of men, you know, and we do it. We did it. Right. We're the nasty son of a bitch to do it to ourselves. Yeah. You know, we're masochistic. And right. then reading the way that you know, they were masochistic. Is we've wiped out a whole number of multiverses to get to this shit show because we like our shit show so much. <laughs> we replayed it, and replayed it, and replayed it. Yeah, I, 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 in my book, Angels and Supernatural, I put the devil as being a human being, and just like you said, it's us. It's within us. The evil. Oh, that, 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 that's a, that's another one that tickles me. What's Excuse that? me. <laughs> the human form. Yeah. <laughs> where where does the human form come from? Okay, you know, our, our real spiritual shape is the animals, ovoid, you know, blob, or the orbs, you know, that's the, the real spiritual shape of everything. So where's the human form? What's the purpose of the uniform? The answer is to kill one another so we can shrink the kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of that going on right now, and we need some help. Yeah, yeah so, so, the way, so the way that we shrink the kids is real simple. We're we're made uh they, we're we're not our bodies we're our anu you know that that has contains all these memories that's and it's also the uh, uh, the root cause of differentiation of all organisms. You know, the science of genetics is refreshing. They don't know what causes full differentiation of any organism, but I do, and it's our aura, you know. And there's all kinds of proof of that. And I got a paper written on it. Uh, and the our aura contains anus that the size of us now, the DNA part of our anu that runs right through the middle of us where the Kundalini rises, can remember or store 48 minutes of a sequence of events. And so then the number of anus that are with us right now is the length of time that's our past, present, future divided by 48. And all of those animals are with us now. And the reason you know that is you put yourself in a cosmere of cylindrical mirror or Nostradamus mirrored egg on the inside. Put yourself in there. You're going to see your past, present, future, whether you want to or not. <laughs> okay, well, where did it come from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the mirror effect you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it was the DNA, you know, uh, and, uh, no, so, you talked I, about the, the ETs that come from, from you know, through the Ethernet being nice. What about the ETs we think that are here, like the reptilians and the the Nephilim, uh, that, that type of ET? Are they the evil uh, bloodsuckers that we talk about, uh, Mike? Well, we, we, all, all of that stuff we manifest. And we, we man, well, it's all a function of the archon. There, there's... There's nothing more evil or more potent than the Archon. If they wanted to take out, for example, the, the, the reptilian, there's a good reptilian race. If they wanted to take out the good reptilian race, it'd take about split second. Well, three seconds, actually. There's kind of a, a, a speed limit in consciousness. It's three seconds uptake. And uh, uh, so the Archon, there's Billions upon billions, you know, like 100 billion. And the, 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 the Gnostics figures are at 80 billion of them. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of Archon. They're like piranhas. You know, what chance do you have against that? They're multidimensional bugs that live in the ethers. There is no 
evil beings here that do not kowtow to the to, to the uh, to the archon. If they don't, they get eaten, mm -hmm. just like that. Go on, you know, <laughs> you know, and you, there's nothing you can do about the archon. You, you know, if you're evil, other than do what they tell you to do. The good people, you know, like Bubble Tech, they the archon, the, the even like policemen, and and anybody that's living in fear cannot come into a bubble field because it forces all the fear out of their cells. It's like being in a microwave for them. Yeah. So let, let me go back to the human form. All right. Yeah. The ETs have our DNA. They have our form because we make them, period. <laughs> is that, is the time and space don't exist. It's all a movie. That's part of the movie. You know, and like like you said, you know, the uh, uh, it appears to be a computer simulation. The, the, the entire the multiverse it is. The zodiac can be solved with computer programs because it is a computer program. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought I saw there's different. something else too that, uh, that that we're missing. Now we talk about you know they said we were made in the image of God, and I guess uh, you talked about the real god the other night could you tell us about that we, well, we pray to god we're the real gods and we we designed the human body to again to create loche to kill one another so we could shrink the kids and the way that you shrink the kids our anu you know remembers 48 minutes now okay we all used to be giants right yeah. all, all of us the souls all of our souls have been here for millions of reincarnations, you know, in this solar system. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, the millions of incarnations on this planet, you know, let alone all the other planets that we've inhabited. Okay. And so, but we've been becoming smaller, dumber, and weaker. Everything else grows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything else grows due to the rules. Whips, weak, and reactive, massive particles in space. Grow. We don't. We become smaller, dumber, and weaker against the rule. So that's the design. Who designed it? We did. <laughs> and we don't. We don't live as long as we used to. And they said oh, it. Yeah. We, we sinned. So they took away the years of our our living, like Noah and uh, uh, you know, way back in the day, uh, nine hundred and sixty years old. And now we're we're confined to about what a hundred years old of age right now who took that away yeah. from us did we design that ourselves we did. everything everything is a function of our design you know you know it, it's like i say the human form and design our, our, our real design is the orb you know is it anu right why do we design the human form to kill one another to fight one another right and what does that do it shrinks our anu now normal merging the normal merging with another being or another anything is just that. It's a seamless merging in both entities know the past, present, future of each other instantly. Okay. Well, it's three second thing. Mm -hmm. now, and that is normal. Okay. Because of the rule, like attracts like the two animals get together, they share all the information, all that information, the past, present, futures in my annual and your annual. If we were to merge, I'd know the past, present, future of you. You'd know the past, present, future of me. And that is normal due to the rule. And there's no escaping the rule. It's got the law. All right. So what's abnormal? <laughs> abnormal is beating up on each other. Yeah. You know? right. And in any manner, verbally, emotionally, and physically, every so so that Anu shrinks the other Anu in the process. You know, and so that's how we've been getting smaller, dumber, and weaker. It's a design. Everything else grows. Humans getting smaller, dumber, and weaker, and more numerous. You know, excuse me. The, the more numerous thing is uh, shows that this is chivalry. You know, that we're we're killing each other off and beating each other up to shrink, so we can make more people on this planet, so that we can have more human vessels from our buddies escaping from. Uh, the, 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 the multiverse of continuous orgasm. We all come from there. Wow. We all come from love. We're all born in love. The, yeah, the continuous orgasm. 
what is that like? I mean, we're, we're thinking like sexual and all this other stuff, but the continual orgasm, that's euphoric, a euphoric uh, a attitude, I guess, uh, Mike, is that- Not exactly euphoric. It's, it's, it's just like orgasm, you know, it's uh, um, the continuous orgasm goes on in this, in this solar system. The Monroe Institute in their astral travels have found these very bright communities of souls that they call eye specks that you can't approach because they're so bright. And if you get too close to them, you get sucked in. Mm -hmm. you know? And so those are reflections of the very first orgasm multiverse. The first orgasm multiverse is just a natural, automatic progression of love and the rule. You're going to wind up with an orgasm based multiverse you know so and, and where the first orgasm came from you know is from the anu all right so her, herself went i've been doing this for a long time that the anu automatically formed up due to the rules she didn't have to do anything it just happened there was no like divine oh i'm gonna do this no you're not it just happened okay and so when that very first anu formed in one etheric cell what happened next is that it mirrored off throughout all of the ethers that she'd been building. And it was like that. And so you have this massive explosion of love going on inside of her space. What is that? <laughs> surprised, yeah. surprised her to a great deal. And, and she still loves it. You know? That's why it still goes on. And we, us idiots, we have legislated against it. Do not do the original sin. <laughs> now, the, the let's get back to Noah. That's you know, like the extinction, the extinction thing that we we I guess we do that ourselves, right? Uh, like back in Noah's time, the Great Flood, uh, we extinguished a lot of human life back then. Do that that does that extinction happen quite a bit to us humans, Mike? Every time, the dark side is one every time until this time, you know. The, it's been the exact same timeline. If you read that timelines essay that I, that I sent you, mm -hmm. if, you, if you read that, it'll blow you away. You know, as to the number of times that we've had these mass extinctions, it's like I say, it's verifiably true 23 times on this planet because there's 20 uh, genetic evidence for 23 different species of humans that have populated this planet, mostly giants. Okay, and some of them are really big too, you know, 100 or 200 feet tall, you know, with 19, 20, you know, and so on like that. We were big. That was us. And if you look into those giants, okay, you will find that they're egotistical, warring, dangerous, you know, to get anywhere near them, like the giant they found in Afghanistan that speared the, uh, you know, the uh, the soldier and had him up on the spear, and, you know, and then they, they wasted him, you know, they had a that was, you know, they had a little platoon there with with that was in two assault were rifles, and they took they took them out. Yeah, you know, Kandahar, two thousand one. Uh, L. A. Marzuli uh, put that story out. Uh, I I read that had him as a guest, and he talked about that. Uh, and it's it's a nephilim that's underground, right? They're they're hiding out underground. I don't I don't know who they are. It doesn't matter. It's just something we made. You know, that was us. You know, it's, that's a, a former iteration of us. And there's been a lot of them. And they're all egotistical and warring, fighting, you know, because we got to shrink the kids. So uh, that's what they do. Right. So we extinguish ourselves. We, re we just remove ourselves from the planet. Not all of us. I mean, like Noah was left with a, a pair of each, you know, species of animal and human. So but I don't think it was. I think it was DNA that he he took with him, and then re. re ever, 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 <laughs> when when you see it in this, what we think of as reality, when you see it, it's not the first time. <laughs> it's not the first time you've done it before. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeing it. And Noah, and like I love this one. There have been verifiably sixteen Jesus figures that have walked this planet with mirror image lifetimes. Born to a virgin on the 25th, change the water to the wine, raise a guy from the dead, and wind up nailed to a tree at 33. All 16 of them. Okay? 
we just change the names to protect the idiots, you know, so that we don't figure out that those really fine details extend to the entire shit show. Like, for example, Noah, that you're asking about, not the first time. <laughs> right. Now, when did the first Jesus come about? Uh, you said 16 of them. When did the first one come about? And then the last one. The first, the first one came about when time went into the first etheric cell and had to spin up on itself when creating the DNA part of the Anu. That's Vishnu or Jesus. That's when he first started. Okay. So you got the sun and, the, and the, the feminine divine, right? There's uh, no, yeah, because that's a male form of God. So you, you, you wind up with male Jesus figures for versus female Jesus figures. There are female Jesus figures, but not that many of them. Oh, okay. And do they do they go out to the other galaxies and the other planets? Do they represent all life forms? The Paul of Mirrors, that every, every, uh, everywhere, you know, in parallel realms. This whole universe, what we got, it mirrors off like a slide carousel, you know, with each one of the slides there, mm -hmm. is a universe. And it's 2D like that, you know, because everything starts in 2D. But then you stick your head in it, you bang, you got an entire universe, like Aladdin's tent, you know? And so we, we've got all of these universes that mirror off, they have to go around the circle, and big toroid do the rule. They got to circle back on themselves. And they're all very similar to here. If you go there, you know, which the Monroe Institute has done, as well as there's all kinds of evidence of things, well, <laughs> This is this is how you know that we're the top of the we're the apex of idiocy right here, planet Earth. And the way you know that is you have all kinds of stuff leaving here, okay? You know, like in the Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Triangle, which is you know over uh, Southeast Asia area. You know, you got ships, you got all kinds of stuff that disappears. Excuse me. Why don't we have stuff coming back? You know, the answer is because shit runs downhill. And <laughs> it, it, it does seem like we're involved in a, in a cycle of killing and wars and, and pain and suffering. And it breaks the monotony, like you said. That's what, why they do it. The elites, you, you talked about the other night, the elites, the Vatican, and the big, big rich families and the banks they control the world. They're the, they're the ones who we assigned, you said, we've actually. Yeah, right. and, and yeah, in, order, in order to preserve the shit show, you need lots of loash. Okay. And so you need people that will influence us to make loash. So we do. Okay. <laughs> so so is, is the Vatican, uh, the Pope is, is he the, the big shot? Uh, so the big shot in what in in the uh Arch, is he in charge? Oh, yeah oh i see okay the uh uh yeah the, the 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 control system for the evil folks amongst us is yes the vatican but they themselves are controlled by the jesuits who get their information from the archon you know and they don't know that they're working for the bugs if they knew that they were working for the bugs you'd think they'd stop no, but they don't know that they work for the bugs. Hmm. Okay, we mentioned that's just obvious. People keep carrying on doing crazy stuff. We mentioned timelines and versus dreamlines. Uh, what did you mean by that? Uh, you know, timelines versus dreamlines, Mike. Well, there's been a lot of fluffhead talk about parallel realms and parallel timelines and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? and however, excuse me very much. There's only been one real timeline for our physical reality, only one movie. And the way that you know that is the, the ending is always the same. And then it gets into the, the, the proof, you know, which I have here, you know, the, the, the proof of the, uh, uh, of the matrix here. I'll read it off to you. It'll blow you away. Yeah. This is a break. This is what bubble tech is all about and is what we need to uh, get away from. And you want me to read it? Do you want you to read it? Sure, sure, go ahead. Okay. Boom. Break out of the matrix. You must. We have already done that. 
And we are just now going through the death throes of our evil, our evil creations. Obviously, in order to let go of a problem, first you have to look at it, admit that it's yours, and then let it go. That's standard psychoanalysis. That's what's going on right now. Okay. Okay. All right. And so here's the proof that we're in a movie from Merlin's essay, Timelines versus Dreamlines. And I want to make the point here that I've written down the explanation of genetics, the explanation of all of physics, you know, the most difficult questions in physics, really simple, you know, and history, and it goes on and on, you know, cosmology, on and on. So there's no way that I, you know, my one guy did that, okay, although it is one guy, that, so it is me, my physical body, being run around by the, make, by the movie. And this physical body has had all of those beings installed into it. Simon Peter, Thor, Prometheus, mm -hmm. uh, Merlin, St. Germain, the St. Germain ones, big time. Yeah. Patent, okay? General Patent. You know, uh, all of those are with me. You know? And so it's like a condensation of past lives to right now because the, the timelines are all merging. But there's only been one timeline, and the way that you know that it's always always into the mass extinction event. So let me let me explain about the matrix here. The end result's always the same: mass extinction event. Thus, every action during the epoch is a mirror of the previous epoch. An epoch being the time between a genesis event and a mass extinction event. And there's Earth epochs by uh, Mr. Jensen. You can he tell you about it. Since the end result is the same, then all of the videos in our past, present, future have to march in lockstep to the very end. That right there is proof that the timeline has been the same all along. Same exact ship show. Mm. Okay. The past, present, future of all things exist in video form stored in annus around everything. All videos from the past, present, future march in lockstep in order for there to be a coherent now. The root storage mechanism of all videos, memories is the God particle, Anu. It has not changed its, its form or function. Therefore, the memories are, are sticking with us. Thus, in order to totally lose the shit show, the form and function of the Anu has to change. And as explained, and you can see it, uh, and Euphoria is here changing it now, right now. And you can see it in that essay. The four teams, you can actually see what it looks like. Can you see the uh, pine cone shape uh, of the, the, not only the Anu, but us? So, and, and eternally euphoric dream time in, in, ensues, not a dream line, wh which are collective dreams that are not manifest into the physical, like the Mandela effect. Those are dream lines. Timeline, the, the timeline is what we're on, is the reality. 16 Jesus figures with mirror meets lifetimes. We change the name so that you, us puppets don't catch on. Might be a clue to the repeating fine de details of the one timeline, which means that all epochs have the same 16 Jesus figures and the same Noah thing and the same alien thing and the same every freaking thing. It repeats and repeats and repeats. It's bullshit. It's just a hoax, you know, <laughs> right? because... Where we come from is blank. It's a blank canvas. The ethers are a blank canvas. And on those ethers, you have to have, well, you don't have to have it. You could just stay in the ethers, which you have herself and himself, you know, is make up the ethers. All right. And so it's a blank sheet. And the only source of images, possible source of the images, is us. And because if herself or himself had actually ever done anything, it would change the entirety of everything, the whole multiverse. They haven't done anything. All they do is provide support for us. We're the kids. We're the kids. We're shrinking the kids. Fine, shrink the kids. You know? and, uh, and so that's what's going on here. You got the background screen and you got us in our subconscious and collectively all making everything. Every rock, every flea fart, absolutely everything springs from our subconscious. Not our physical yeah. brain. Our physical brain is just a, a hoax. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and anyway. matter matter is all frequency, and we are all frequencies, right? No, 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 absolutely not. 
that's and they they misquote Tesla. When you think of the universe, think of matter, and and or think of uh, frequency in this uh, whatever he said, you know, whatever they say they said, not true, because he knew about the ethers, okay, and and uh, uh, so again, everything starts as a seed or an idea in darkness. There is no vibrations there, okay, and then so that idea mirrors up through the uh, uh, through the ethers and grows as it does. It doesn't start into vibrations until it passes through the pentag pentagonal ethers and gets into the hexagonal ethers. Mm -hmm. The hexagonal ethers is where you have toroid formation. You have to have a toroid, a Tesla toroid, and the way the Tesla wound this toroid is the exact way that toroids form in the ethers, and the, out of the center of the toroid, you have electromagnetic magnetic waveforms. That's just really brain-dead physics. That's how it works, period. Mm -hmm. That's the toroid that Marconi stole from Tesla to do wireless communication, okay? Uh, and then, like I say, that's in my essays, you know, it shows how Tesla wound this toroid. And then you compare that to some anus, what, what happens is you, you got seven image only realms that are flat to make one physical realm. And the way that that happens is that you the, the anus lay down in the one etheric realm at the 90 okay and they communicate with anu in in the adjacent realm and the, the, then gravity starts and that's an affinity for information all this information is in the dna part of the anu and so the dna part of the next anu picks it up which is again why when you have actual merging you know the past present future of each other because it's all there in the anu of both parties right and so when when an anu gets to that point it's automatic it grabs onto the information that's gravity it's an affinity for information so that's the first thing that forms when you when you get when you go into toroid formation one anu lays anu lays down communicates with anu in the next etheric realm it does the same and same until you get to the seventh one and then they can circle up into a hexagonal ether and the reason that the hexagonal ether is has seven components, it's got six sides, obviously, but the center part is the God part, okay? And, and, that, and that gap is where the information comes from that gets broadcast in the, in the toroid. And so then the toroids form up in the ethers, okay? That's how you do, that's where you get, like, and that, the root of the number seven, nobody you know on this planet no physicist, nobody can tell you exactly what the root of the number seven is. I have just done that. And I got a couple essays that lay it out. You know? And, you know, nobody, nobody upon nobody knows what I just got done telling you. And it's really simple. Again, like I say, it's all do the rule. It's not like maybe. All right? And so, so then you got toroids in the ethers. And then the, the toroids uh, do the rule, start clanging together. When they clang together, they make music. And so you got the music of the spheres that progresses according to the Fibonacci series, because the torates, according to the rule, have to attract one another. But because they were made in a sequence, okay, you know, just one and another one and another one. It wasn't like the Anu that went instantly created an orgasm. Torates, you have to, they have, they're, they're made. There's a little bit of time involved in making a toroid. Okay? That's the three second thing. And so then the, uh, the way that they uh, uh, climb together is according to the Fibonacci series. Thus, everything in, in the entire observable universe manifests according to the Fibonacci series, period. Might be a clue that it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a couple of, I guess, novice questions here. Uh, where is the end of space and time? And... And how long have we been here on Earth? 4.5 billion years that we've been recycling? Those two questions. No, it's four, the, movie, the, the movie is four and a half billion years. Everything outside of the movie is, is a hoax, like the dinosaurs. There is no 67 million year history. There's only a 4.5 million year history. And how, how many times the 4.5 million year shit show is played? Like I said, a minimum of 23 times on this planet. Actually, I think it's more like 40, you know, uh, and so that's that. And excuse me, 
<laughs> genetic evidence. Right. The 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 geneticists have tracked 110,000 mammals through five mass extinction events that they can study. Okay. And what they found is that during the mass extinction event, 90% of the DNA leaves the planet. What's left over is just the 10%, you know, cockroaches and ferns and mycelium. You know, that's about it. Right. And then during the Genesis event, the geneticists found that the exact same DNA reemerges on planet Earth with the exact same memories. And so we replay the exact same shit show. Exact. Okay. There's there's a little bit of creativity that goes yeah. on, obviously, but not a lot. You know, even <laughs> when we come from Mars and, and inhabited the Earth, is that is that true also? That it's, our human there isn't anything outside of us. All of that that we look at, we think of being outside of us, is actually inside of us. You know, it's a, 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 one, another one that I love about the, the red shift and the Big Bang Theory. And so, you know, cosmologists have been looking for uh, for blue sh shifting, uh, uh, a blue shifting galaxy to prove uh, that the Big Bang Theory is not correct. Okay, they've been looking for that. Mm. So they've been looking at that for a long time. And so the rule is like attracts like, so they found it. And what they found, and they found two blue shifting galaxies. One of them's a proto galaxy, an offspring, and it's still connected by an umbilical cord to the original larger galaxy that that spawned it. Okay, problems, big problem though. You know, they're blue shifting at, at different rates, which is millions of miles an hour, which is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> back, back to the one back question. Moving. Where is the end of space? I remember a, a friend of mine when I was only eight years old, he said, think about it. Where is the end of space at? And the I, blue wall. The, the, it's a very dark blue wall. When you get there, you'll know you're there. This whole universe is in an etheric cell, and it's a very dark blue wall when you get to it. Okay. Well, what's on the other side of that dark blue wall? Is there any? Well, on the other side of it, there's a gap. Okay. Mirrors off, just like the Andrews mirrored off in this one. And then you got another uh, entire universe. That's why the slide carousel, you know, it's got a gap between each one of the slides. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it just goes on and on and on infinity, right? No, it goes around the circle. Okay. Circle. That's, in, yeah, that's an infinity. That's circle. Uh, now you talk about, uh, Let's get into this bubble tech. I know that you wanted to talk about that. There's been a lot of miracles that have been performed by the bubble tech. Could you tell us about that, uh, Mike? Off the scale, unmatched in human history, un un unbelievable, mind-boggling, been going on for seven years. And then there's some translator guys that have been going on for a decade prior to that. You know, translators being um, uh, Wilhelm Reich's cloud busters with a big, long pipe pipes. Well, those things are really powerful because they condense the uh, person's intentions. And they've been used to stop hurricanes and stuff for years. Bubble tech is, is because we broadcast, we do actually bigger uh, um, you know, miracles than a translator can do. A translator can focus on one thing and change it. Okay? Whereas bubble tech can fo focus on one very large thing and change it, which we've done. We, uh, in 2019, was a big year for us. They, uh, uh, the fires were going in Australia. Australian bushfires are frightening. They move at 100 miles an hour. They've, they've found people sitting at their, you know, sitting at their table, you know, cooked, you know, because the fire went by and the family was sitting around the table when it got them. You know, and so those fires are a big deal in Australia. And uh, uh, so we made it rain in Australia, put out all the fires, okay, saving over 500 million animals alone in Australia. <clears throat> we made it rain in the Amazon. And the, the Amazon, one of, we sent euphoria one day, and the rain started the following day, which is normal. The rain started the following day in a part of the Amazon where during that time of the year, it has never rained <laughs> ever recorded mm. history but we made it rain okay and that put out all the fires in the amazon and then the same thing in the congo 
And the same thing in Siberia. Siberia was in real bad shape because there were navigable rivers that had dried up. You know? mm -hmm. And we made it rain there and changed that. Now, a big point about all of this is that we, us people with our bubbles, did that. Irrefutably, we did that without leaving the farm. We, and so there is no there. There's only, so where we did that and where bubble tech does its manifestation is in our center chakra, the heart chakra, you know, in, in the center of us, because that's that is where everything comes from. It's closest, you know, the, everything that's human and humane comes from there. And so we were installing euphoria there, you know, and euphoria is much more powerful than love or fear because it expunges love and fear and and you can't stop euphoria resistance is futile you know so bubble tech is going to lead to the to the uh, to the dream time and because we're saving lives like i said so at least 500 million the fires killed at least 500 million animals until we stopped them so we saved easily 500 million animals same in the amazon same in congo and siberia so you know 500 million 500 million 500 you know it's a big number we saved a lot of animals. The the numbers of people we saved is unknowable. It's a very large number. And a great deal of them from their deathbed, which I sent you one like that. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple, you know, I sent you, you know, where the people around, the, the, the latest one was, the lady was vomiting black, you know, which is due to renal failure. And it's, in, that's the end time, that's death. Everybody in this hospital that has come in vomiting black stuff dies, except this lady. We sent her euphoria, and it was just like that. She got happy, and now she's out of the hospital and fine. Let me bring that page up. to come <laughs> uh, So, you know, let me bring that up. Uh, yeah, and, and it goes on with our miracles. Yeah. We, we, we've either stopped or mitigated a uh, all hurricanes that people tell us about the one that just happened in the New Zealand, nobody told us about it. If they told us about it, we'd have stopped it. Right. But they didn't. So they got smacked. Here's a uh, uh, screen up now, uh, Mike. It's a uh, bubble tech is the world's largest and most important project. And there's a young girl, I guess she was saved. Uh, yeah. Samara, that, yeah. that's something that me as Merlin desired when we, when we changed that happened the same time that we, uh, uh, made it rain in Australia and put out all the fire. So let's have another miracle to prove that it's us that did it. And so that Samara is that miracle. And she, she was uh, at leukemia and had been on chemotherapy for a long time. She hadn't walked in three weeks. Mm. And we sent her euphoria. Overnight, she lost two kilos of water retention and she walked the following day. Now, when you send the the euphoria, what are you what are you sending actually? Euphoria is like is the human emotion, right? It's not herself's emotion. It's not himself's emotion. It's a human emotion of little kids right. that are euphoric all the time. You know, it's like you got a bunch of little kids, you know, and you tell them you're going to go on a uh, field trip tomorrow. They're all excited, jumping up and down. Yay, field trip! Okay, they don't know where they're going. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> okay. And there's a picture of the fires, and uh, you've got some testimony here, I think. Uh, you know, yeah, go ahead and read it. Yeah, blow you away tomorrow. To read what she said. Okay, let me see. Let me go back. Let's see. Punctuate the fact. Well, okay. Okay. It, to punctuate the fact that the bubble tech did all of those miracles. We found a human to save this Australian girl, 11 year old Samara, who had been on chemo for and for leukemia for some time. She had not walked in three weeks. The following day, she got up and walked. She lost two kilos of water, just as you said, retention overnight, and went home a couple of days later with zero detectable cancer. We requested such a healing to solidly prove that we'd made the miraculous rain in Australia and put out the fires. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. So you can use that technology at any time uh, that you want. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. The, the, well, it's timeless. That's the neat part. The neat part about bubble tech is that you take, for example, the Maharishi effect, all right? The way the Maharishi effect works is they've done this 40 times. They've uh, cut the crime rate in half in 40 different cities and even cut the roar, war rate in half in Beirut. They did, that's Maharishi effect. You can look it up. It's the most studied uh, phenomena in the social sciences. And so the way the Maharishi effect works is that you have a bunch of people, transcendental meditators, uh, meditating at the same time, and they're just doing TM. They're not, they're not like intending to, to cut the crime rate or anything like that. They, they, all they do is TM. And so they have to do it at the same time and pretty much the same place. And when you get the right quantum, the right number, of people doing TM in the, in one place together, the following day you have the the, the crime rate just drops off instantly, yeah. You know? And so it's the hundredth idiot effect or the hundredth monkey effect or you know it's the Maharishi effect. You got to hit the quantum, okay, of folks doing it, and you got to be doing it at the same time. Bubble tech doesn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could sure use more bubble tech right now with all the crime that we have around the world, Mike, and the, uh, all the um, morals that are just, you know, sinking down, you know, really rapidly. Uh, we have a world that's in chaos. What's going to bring an end to this chaos, Mike? The military. The military. That's that's the other aspect of me, you know, General Patton and... Mm -hmm. St. Germain, uh, I'm very connected to the military. The, the top of Q reads my writings. Q is 800 general officers and all of the, uh, um, the, the you know, all of the militaries on the planet and the, the top white guys from the intelligence, age, all the intelligence agencies, all of the agencies, including the governments, have white darks and fence setters. And the, all the fence setters have chosen sides. And and so we basically now have just white and dark, dark folks in the agencies and the militaries and so on and so forth. And that's all being the dark folks are being expunged at such a phenomenal rate. I don't know why they don't give up. There, there are. Uh, 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 well, I know a military intelligence guy. His his job is to get rid of the super soldiers that the uh, uh, elite put together from the space fleet mm -hmm. when they used to control the space fleet and those super soldiers they go up 20 and back but they get age regressed so when they come back they like they they're as if they never left but when they do the age regression they can install a program in them that's like a manchurian candidate when they hear you know you get a phone call or even like a broadcast they hear a certain word and it's a trigger and so a whole bunch of them have been triggered here recently as evidenced by the, the sleeper cells that are derailing uh, rail cars, you know, for the purpose of screwing up the supply system in the food chain mm -hmm. and doing all these mass shootings and, and doing these, you know, the harp things like, uh, you know, wiping out 10 cities in Turkey, over 100,000 people they took out. Mm -hmm. no, no one tells you about that. There were 46, I think, earthquakes right in a row. There was no one epicenter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so that was done by heart. You know? And, uh, you know, and, and also it's all these sleeper cells that have been activated to all this shit, what we see, what's going on right now. And so this is, and those sleeper cells have been decimated by my military intelligence guy and his crew, they, their Delta Force. Uh, the Delta Force guys, the elite Delta Force guys, and they go out and they take out the sleeper cells, and they have taken out three hundred thousand of them. Three hundred thousand of those super soldiers. They, there's there's so many. They made enough super soldiers to put one on every block in every city on the planet. That's what they say. I don't know if it's that many, but it's pretty close because they've taken out three hundred thousand of them, and they're still out there operating, as is obvious. You know, and these so, are these factual figures, Mike, that you've got a hold of through Q, uh, or is this all conspiracy type stuff? Uh, well, the the military intelligence guy is real, 
you know, and he meets with the Donald right regularly. When I want to write the Donald, I send it to the top of Q, and he then then he gets my messages from the ultimate uh, security outfit on the planet. And so all of these stuff that I'm sharing with you is is factual, but there's no there's nobody going to write it down, you know, and and put their name on it and say, yeah, we did that until after. You know the emergency broadcast system. Maybe come out during the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> We've been hearing this quite a bit, and this is why I guess a lot of the news information, the internet, uh, social platforms, uh, they they want to get rid of those those conspiracies. And we'd all like to know the real truth and not the disinformation or misinformation. Uh, but we've heard this over and over and over that there's going to be changes that that uh, Trump is going to come back and all this other stuff. It, it never happens. It's all, it's all misinformation and disinformation from what all we gather. And uh, I think a lot of the media platforms are right to say that uh, it could be all conspiracy. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way I, you know, I look at it in the way I guess a lot of people look at it, that, uh, that, we're in for changes, but we don't know where we're going. This well, they're, well, they're looking wrong. We have idiots, you know, <laughs> yeah. and and the, the problem has been the cabal, you know, and then the, the reason that it's a problem is because uh, they have these fail safe situations where they protect themselves. OK. And one of them was that they had every bridge in the United States and every concrete dam you know, like across the Mississippi and all the rivers set to blow. They blew one as a beta test in Minneapolis, the bridge across the Mississippi, a steel bridge, mm -hmm. fell into the Mississippi at free fall speed. Well, steel doesn't fail like that. <laughs> so they had tested that. There's been a lot of things happen that uh, draws a little suspicion for most people, and, and especially myself. I take a look at it, but we can't prove anything. And that's the thing that, you know, the media and all of them, they, well, some media want the proof, actual proof. There's some media that works from the shooting from the hip, but uh, I think that's wrong. Uh, but no, let's kind of end up with here. We're, we're going to, we're actually going to, you know, let people know how they can get a hold of your information and, and uh, that type of thing. We're also going to talk about your, your email address and your PayPal uh, account. Uh, I wanted to ask you this last question. We are headed into a euphoric dream time wherein all of our ideas become things instantly, even before we finish the thought. And that's going to be our end times, right, Mike? Right. That's where we're going. It's like when, when you're when you're in spirit, you ask a question, the answer become, comes before you can finish answering the question. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the ethers are conscious and they know what you want and they give it to you. The same is true of teleportation. When you, when you, well, uh, this you can look up. We've done teleportation a lot, humans. Okay. We have better technology than aliens. They, in fact, Gene Deco has talked about it, you know, that the running meter, that place out by Jupiter where the moon, where, where, you know, all kinds of different races meet, they come to buy our technology because it's better than theirs. Really? We have you. Yes. No, there is no back yeah. engineering from us. No. Well, there, yeah, there was, you know, it, it mirrors both ways. Yeah. You know, you know but, uh, uh, yeah, the, you know, Area 51 did that. You know, I have equity in it. Yeah. Well, Area you're 51 telling me that. In the space suite. Yeah. Well, what about, and also in Area 51, you said there's evil going on there, Mike? Yeah, underneath Area 51, they're doing satanic rituals. Okay. Underneath and all the Mormon tabernacle and all, every uh, every major church on the planet, they're underneath it, they have satanic rituals that they do. And these are all on ley lines, you know, so they can spread the low shower. We put them up to that. That's the best way for them to spread lows. Bubble tech doesn't need the ley lines. We don't need time. When, when we do our miracles, we don't have to all meet at once, Okay. All we have to do is use our bubbles, which are basically capacitance fields, you know, and those capacitance fields are, are nonpolar, 2D, timeless. And so whenever we do an intention, you know, amongst ourselves, it doesn't matter when we do it, as long as we do it. 
Yeah. And, and as long as you do the intention, it goes into the gap between the, the capacitance plates. Okay. And that gap is seed level of creation. Mm -hmm. And so when we put euphoria and an image in there, it happens. They get enough of us doing it. It happens. There, there's only like five, 5,000 or maybe more people with bubbles. <clears throat> Supposedly when we get to 50,000, there'll be dream time. <clears throat> wow. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I've got a standing order to the military to start making when they are done scraping the, the uh, bad folks off the planet. I've got a uh, standing order. Start making the whole military, every military. Start making bubbles and stop when we get to dream time. You'll know. Okay. Uh, now, I, I just saw a notice in one of my newsletters that said the military is being trained to fight in tunnels and underground. So apparently that yeah, yeah. Is started. That was years ago, quite a few years ago. They spent a half a billion dollars training the army. They there's in the United States. There's uh, say 36 brigades, something like that. 33 of them have been trained to the cost of and equipped to fight underground. And that's what they've been doing, and that's been since the China Lake thing, you know. But actually, the the uh, uh, the Blowing up of the dumps and tunnels started uh, when the bummer got in there. Because mm -hmm. if you remember way back then, they were talking about these booms all over the plant. That people were hearing these booms, didn't know where they were coming from. Right. What that was was taking out dumps with with tactical nukes. Okay, that's what I heard too. I heard that information, but yeah, right. So that, that's what's been going on. So so mm -hmm. for so for the it so for the idiots that don't think that. The RV and all that's coming. Find a new planet. You're an idiot. <laughs> all and, the and things that happen do soon. Not, right? Do not go around any military. Do not thank the military. Just stay away. Go find a hole in the ground and stay there. <laughs> so this is all going to happen soon, right, Mike? Yeah, it's probably real soon. You know, well, Jasara says there can't be any wars going on, on the planet before, uh, you know, the... Uh, the RV, all the wars have to stop. So we've got, we still got the underground war going on and we still have Ukraine going on. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, according to Jassara, have to stop. Now, maybe they've worked a way around that. I don't know. Because Iraq, you know, they, their budget is before parliament right now. You know, And so today, tomorrow, they could sign off on the budget and which would, uh, 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 include the the new rate, you know, exchange rate for the dinar, and that's it. We're in. We're into it. Okay. You no, know, but there's a couple other things that need to happen before that. I know what they are. There's triggers, you know, that have to happen before the RV, and I'm right connected to those also. Wow. You know, when those triggers come down, and then, you know, we, we're it's kind of melodramatic. We're going to know when the RV is coming. Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end the show on that one. It's a this is a particularly long show. I usually don't do them uh, past an hour, but I wanted to get in all all the information. I still it's going to still take several shows to get all the information you know and what you talk about. But I just wanted to end by saying, uh, Mike Emery, I appreciate you coming here. But also, there's donations on PayPal at your email one nine four eight nineteen forty eight Emery. 10 e m e r y 10 no, no just 1948 emory at gmail okay 1948 emory at gmail okay put it underneath the video yeah i i will do that i'll put that in the in the content section of the of the video okay and uh could you tell us where we can find some of your work uh, academia.edu is one of them yeah mike emory academia on, on facebook bubble tech is a private group because we don't trust facebook you know, so you have to ask to join and and you get on there and you, you start surfing all the way down through what's gone, been going on. You'd be totally amazed. You know, there's one thing, the, uh, there's magic in the air and it lists hundreds upon hundreds, you know, approaching thousands of miracles that we've done. And, it, and that's not even half of what's actually happened, you know, over the seven years we've been going on. It's just miracle after miracle. Right. You know, it's, it sounds like a, a international prayer chain or, or a prayer group, but it's stronger than prayers, right? 
Yeah, it's, we get it done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Mike Emery, it's been great having you on the show. And I went particularly long, like I said. But uh, I wanted to, and, and we'll have you back again if you if you will come back. I enjoy talking to you. I know I had a long chat with you the other night, and it was great. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, you know, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's like one of mine that I got. What do you do for fun? Uh, destroy people's concept of reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened to me, too. I mean, uh, the Matrix and the holographic world. Yes, I, I believe that that's coming to fruition, that people are going to know this before long. I'd like to close by saying thank you very much, Mike Emery, a uh, physicist, and also, uh, I mean, somebody who teaches the professors and the scientists uh, things. He doesn't teach college per se, but uh, he went to college and he studied, uh, you know, this physics and, and things of that nature. So he has a good, well-rounded, I guess, self-education and reading and also experimenting and doing things. And he's much appreciated. Uh, your viewpoints are really different. And I think we need to put that all together to make the, the you know, piece, put the pieces of the puzzle together to make it all work. And I want to thank you very much, uh, Mike Emery, for, and from the UK for being on the show. This is the Dave Emmons Show. And we're going to be signing off. And thank you, everybody, for, for listening and, and watching. Good evening. <laughs>